Unless you are uh, blind, there is so much going on in the country with Donald Trump, the Democrats, the upcoming election, border crisis, wars. Uh, to help me understand all of it, I have Bill O'Reilly. Bill, thank you so much for coming on the show today. My pleasure, Stephen. Thanks for having me. So just before I hit record with you, I noticed that the left-leaning media is going crazy. That tells me that the oral arguments with the Supreme Court are not going their way. It's looking like they are not going to uh, rule in favor of removing Donald Trump from the ballot. Did you ever see this as a serious threat to Donald Trump and, and his run for presidency? Or, or what were your thoughts on this story? Well, as a historian slash journalist, uh, I knew from the very beginning that the Supreme Court was not going to allow the state of Colorado or Maine or any other state to dictate who was going to be on the ballot, uh, particularly because there's no legal basis to do so. Uh, Mr. Trump has not been convicted of insurrection or anything like that, not been convicted of anything. So you don't have the right as a state to say to the people of the United States, the other 49 states, ah, we're not going to put your guy on the, on the ballot because we don't like him. It's as simple as that. I'm a simple man, Stephen. And so probably going to be nine nothing or maybe eight one. Sotomayor is always a wild card on the court. Um, but Trump will be on the ballot come November. Okay. And do you think that this will be the end of it? meaning Maine won't go forward, some of these other states that are still... No, they can't. They can't. They can't. One, once a decision is made, it, it encompasses all states. Okay, interesting. Okay. And then uh, this ruling that came out from this uh, bench of three federal judges saying that Trump does not have immunity as a former sitting president, how, how dangerous, is it, dangerous is it for any sitting president or past president to not have immunity, to be able to do his or her job of running a 300 million uh, person country that has wars and, and so many moving parts. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? I think the Supreme Court may overturn that ruling as well, because uh, in, in recent history, you could have easily charged President Bush the Younger with torture violations, human rights violations, because in his administration, waterboarding was allowed, there were uh, Abu Ghraib in Iraq, Guantanamo Bay controversies about how the captured jihadists were treated there. You could haul them in and, and you can look at every president in his administration and say, hey, he broke the law. Look at Biden. Biden's breaking the law now on the immigration front by not enforcing it. So I can't imagine that a theoretical argument, which is what the special counsel charges are. Remember, Trump's not charged with insurrection or anything that's felonious. He's charged with conspiracy. Anybody can be, you can be charged, I can be charged with conspiracy tomorrow if the feds want to. They can make up anything they want. And they'll bring in some people uh, to say, yeah, oh, Trump. January 6th, he wanted to do this. And then Trump will bring in people, lawyers, who said, I told him, the president, that he could challenge the electors because that's what happened. So you're in a court, reasonable doubt is raised because the president's counsel, at least three of them, as far as I know, might be more, advised him he had the right to do that. So what is this all about? It's, it's, it's an erosion of the Constitution because people hate Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, and it, from, from what I see, um, you know, the, the left is trying to say, well, because he was sworn in as a president, that makes him an officer. He's immediately booted out. And yet nobody has tied him to any of these white supremacy groups or the Proud Boys or any of these groups that that did uh, damage on January 6th. And yet because it was, you know, broadcast as such a terrible day, they're, they're trying to link him in any way that they can. But there, there is no connection. Nobody's made any connection. Well, there'll be the special counsel Smith 
will produce people that say, I told Donald Trump this was illegal. I told Donald Trump you can't do this. They'll produce those people. But then the Trump people will say, but other people disagree with that. It's a theoretical charge. So, and then there's evidence like day before, Donald Trump told his Defense Department guys to get the National Guard on alert. If he wanted an insurrection, why would he do that? That's in stone. That happened. So there's so much reasonable doubt. The only reason this is being uh, adjudicated at all is political. They're just hoping that they can get a jury and they might be able to get one in Washington, D.C. Remember, only 5% of the population of the District of Columbia voted for Trump. How can he get a fair trial there? Can't. Yeah, he can't and he won't. Um, you, you've been covering some of the biggest news stories over the last couple decades. How, how big is this story of the Texas border and Greg Abbott, Governor Abbott saying, of course, we have the right to defend our state. We're also the first line of defense on the southern border for the United States. And Joe Biden on the federal side saying, stand down, let people in. The taxpayers will cover their bill. Let as many in that claim amnesty. How, how big is this story in your estimation? It's a big story, but it's fairly clear cut. So the, the Texas authorities and Governor Abbott knows this can intrude on federal jurisdiction. And according to the Constitution, the federal government runs the borders. So there is a certain amount of land where the federal government oversees what happens. Texas can intrude on that. Now, Texas did by putting razor wire on some of the federal property. Okay, it went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said the federal government can take the razor wire down, it has the power to take it down. So, but what the federal, what the Supreme Court did not say is, you can take it down, but then Abbott says, well, we'll put it right back up. It's like a merry-go-round. You take it down, we'll put it up. You take it down, we'll put it up. And that's where we are right now. So what's likely to happen is the feds are going to leave the razor wire there. They're not going to mess with it because it's not worth it to them. And then in, if Biden loses in November, and let's all hope that happens because he's in cognitive decline, then the new president will say, enough of this open border stuff. We're going to cooperate with Texas to stop all this. Okay, interesting. That's great insight. Um, Donald Trump has been through a lot of witch hunts, and I'm uh, guessing he'll continue. Um, speaking of witch hunts, you have a new book out in your Killing series. Uh, this is the most popular series uh, in books. I've read many of them. They are so well-researched, uh, just incredibly well-written. Um, tell me about this new book that's out in the series, Killing, Killing the Witches, The Horror of Salem, Massachusetts. Well, Killing the Witches is basically a tale of injustice, of hysteria. And I wrote the book because it's happening again, right now. So the ultimate cancel culture began in 1692 in Salem, Massachusetts, when young girls, 10 to 12, accused adults of being witches. And two weeks later, those adults, with no evidence against them, had ropes around their neck and were canceled, literally. And they're still bu they're buried in Salem today. 20 of them died, were killed by the authorities. So fast forward to 2024, in America, you're accused of something, you're guilty. Media, ah, they don't care whether you did it or not front page, whatever it is, you did it. That's a witch hunt. Trump uses the words witch hunt all the time. And I saw his guys a few weeks ago and I said, look, when the former president says the words witch hunts, can he just hold my book up? That would be great marketing for me. All right. Because killing the witches 
is historically fascinating. You really should know what happened in Massachusetts Bay, how the pilgrims got here on the Mayflower harrowing journey, why all this happened, and then how it influenced our constitution, which it did, and then up to the present day, the witch hunt is back. And so that's why the book is a smash hit, sold more than 300,000 copies as we speak, and we're very happy with it. Oh my gosh, 300,000 copies? That's, an, that's incredible. Yeah, in this day and age when nobody reads anymore, they're all on the dopey uh, devices, that's a pretty good showing. Yeah, you, you may have to go on and read it on TikTok 60 seconds at a time to, to reach the year, I know, it's but... insane. <laughs> insane. Oh, you know, I, I like I like how you tied that into this cancel culture because I, I believe cancel culture is so dangerous. Um, and especially, you know, with the, the Salem witch trials, it, it ended up being completely erroneous. You know, it makes me think of the uh, just yesterday I was at lunch with a rabid Biden supporter. Uh, but we were doing a business deal and and he kept he kept trying to defend the Russia hoax as if it was still true. And I'm like, that has been so far proven false. I don't even know why it's still in your mind, but they can't they can't seem to let these these witch hunts go. There's a reason people believe what they want to believe. And, and that's a philosophy of life that everybody should understand. There are some people like you and me, Stephen, where we embrace logic. We have a conversation with people, listen to their points. They have a good point. You may, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I have lots of liberal friends. I have conservative friends. I listen to what they have to say. I think they're uh, misguided. I tell them, and I always back it up. But most people aren't like that. They believe what they want to believe. And so your friend wants to believe that Joe Biden's a genius. All right, he's the greatest guy. And no matter what you do or say, he's not going to change his opinion. Probably because he hates Trump so much. That really was what's driving. Nobody's really voting for Joe Biden. And if you don't know he's in cognitive decline, which he is, you don't want to know. All right? You're living a delusion. The man is dangerous because he cannot function mentally anymore at the level he needs to function at. And we prove that time and time and time again. Yeah, I mean, he proves it with each speech and each time he tries to leave the speech and needs to be be guided away. Um, what, one thing that I wanted to better understand while I have you is uh, with, with the witches in particular, was it just the opinion of the young people and the pointing of fingers or was it <laughs> the fact that these people were heavily religious in, in olden times where, you know, the, the fear of ghosts or, or witches maybe over, overran their logic, what, what ultimately led to the people turning on these 20 individuals? It's an excellent question you're asking. So when the pilgrims came over here, they weren't called pilgrims then. It was only 100 years later when that came in. When the Puritans came over from England, they were in constant fear of their lives. Half of them died within a year. So a hundred showed up, Plymouth, Massachusetts. One year out, half of them are dead because of the weather and uh, Native Americans or whatever it may be. It was a constant fear. Some of them moved up north to Salem because it was free land and it was a different, it was an easier for them to make a living, whatever it may be. The people who ran Salem were religious fanatics and they control the population by saying, you don't know what I say. If you don't do what Cotton Mather, who was a, w a main witch hunter, he was a reverend, you don't do what we say, you're going to hell. So hell and the devil was huge and they were used as a control basis for the people. Do what we say, because if you don't, you're under the influence of Satan. The children were so miserable because they couldn't dance, they couldn't sing, they couldn't be kids, they couldn't play, they had to go to church for 18 hours a day. It was crazy that once they got on to this devil witches thing, it became exciting for them. And then if there were adults they didn't like, boom, he's a witch, she's a witch. 
They haunted me. They came in the night. And then there's these judges and ministers writing it all down, going, oh, yeah. But some of the things that we uncover was if you were executed as being a witch, your property went to the judges. They got your property. So there was an economic motive for them to hang you. There's a lot of that stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I know from reading your other books that that's not the only gem that people are going to uncover. No, every page you'll learn something you didn't know. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Okay. Final question. I know we're limited on time. Um, you mentioned that we need to get Biden out. He's in mental decline. Is Donald Trump, in your estimation, the best person to do that? Is he going to be the Republican nominee? Well, he'll be the nominee. I wouldn't say he's the best person. Um, Donald Trump's demeanor hurts him in the country. No doubt about it. I mean, he should be 20 points ahead in the poll. If you just compare how he governed in four years to how Biden's governed in three, it's no comparison. There's none. The working class people in particular get killed by the Biden administration, whereas they prospered under Trump. But because he lacks discipline, Trump takes everything personally. I wrote a book on Trump called The United States of Trump, and then lashes out and, and spends an inordinate amount of time on personal beefs that he should rise above, I think. And I think if he did that, he could, he could waltz back into the Oval Office. I've told them that. I've known Donald Trump for more than 30 years, but you know, the old cliche is you march to a different drummer. I don't know where his drummer is, but it's different, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm gonna put a link down below to Killing the Witches. If people want to continue to follow you, what's the best way to do that? Should I point them? Forward? Well, we're the most successful independent news agency in the world, as well as being the uh, top selling uh, nonfiction book people in the world. Um, BillOReilly.com is where we live. And if you go to the website, we have a television program. We have a radio analysis on 300 stations. And we got a lot of stuff going on. So I appreciate you having me on the program. Um, and uh, we want to reach as many people as we can. So BillOReilly.com is the place to be. Okay. I'm going to put that book link and that link down below. Thank you so much for coming on.